And for most of these patients, it was three visits, four visits, maybe five. Mm -hmm. And so it was uh, no less than three. And I would say that right around the third session, that's where I saw the most dramatic change. I would say most of them I could have stopped at three, but they wouldn't have been, their distress wouldn't have been down to a zero or a one. It would have been more like a three or a four. And I think they could have been okay there, but I wanted to really see if we could get it even lower and get even more dramatic results. So I would say that at the third session is where you see the most significant change. So when we're talking about sevens and fives and threes and twos and all that, we're talking about subjective units of distress. Mm -hmm. So you would say to them? On a scale of zero to 10, zero is no disturbance or neutral, and 10 is the highest disturbance you can imagine. When you think about this scene, and the scene would be maybe the moment of diagnosis, okay. how disturbing is it to you right now? Not how disturbing was it in that moment, but how disturbing is it right now? And uh, so then they would give you a number, and when you started out, the numbers were usually? Seven, eight, nine, or 10. And the second visit? The second visit, they would usually, first of all, in the, after the first session, after the, okay. they would already be down. So if they were at a 10, they would already be down to a seven. Okay. So they definitely came down two points, three points in the first session. And then they usually didn't drop at the next session before treatment happened again. Some of them might go up a point, mm -hmm. but most of them held at least one or two points of a difference. Mm -hmm. It was definitely lighter. After the second visit, they, their subjective units of distress would continue to go down. They can continue to go down so that they would have been right around a five at the end of the second visit. Okay. Sometimes a six, sometimes a five, depending on how high they were that when they started. Okay. And then um, they would go home. And now, how, how much time were between visits? Well, this is the thing that I love about the study, was that it was very real world. So some patients <laughs> came in one day, and I did the whole treatment in one day. All five hours of treatment, or all four hours of treatment, and they would get it in one day. Some got it over the course of a couple of months, and some got it over several weeks. So it was just the way it would be in anybody's office. Some people have people who come in from out of town and they try and do an intensive treatment. Some people can only see people every few weeks and some people see them once a week. So there was a smattering of each. I am I am so blown. I'm getting an education today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So that's basically, there, it's okay. In other words, you can you, you make some gains and it, it holds there. Mm -hmm. And whether it's two weeks or two days or two hours, or that then you just pick up where you left off. Exactly. Is that right? Yep. That is so awesome. So the last visit, they're coming down to, after the third visit or fourth visit, they're down to a? Probably a three, a three four. Maybe. Okay, and at that point, they're feeling pretty relatively good. Yeah, and, and it's at that point too where you start to see changes in other areas of their lives. That's where not just the scene changes, but also they're starting to maybe do some more fun things, or they're starting to feel a little lighter, or things at work seem to be less stressful. I did interview some of the patients that you took care of, and um, I have some interesting feedback for you, if I didn't already <laughs> give it to you. And that is, uh, the patients had no idea what was going on. <laughs> they, 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 were, they saw the arm, you see, as we do the... Uh, kinesiological testing and they saw that you were doing something with the arm but they have no appreciation for that the arm is attached to the nervous system which is attached to uh, the spinal cord which is attached to the ascending and descending tracts, which is attached to the brain and the cognitive centers and the emotional centers and all the things that are going on they have no idea about that they see this the arm going up and down. <laughs> I know. so they had no idea what you were doing and I, I think I did tell you about the, the patient that said that uh, he knew that you were doing the the placebo. He knew you were doing the sham. <laughs> it was it just, just too weird. <laughs> it was too weird, and, uh, and but he got results. Exactly. So I don't know what. To and say. I think that I know exactly what to say about that. And what it says to us is that even if the patients don't believe the treatment works, it works. You don't have to believe in it for it to work because it works at a physiological level. You're getting changed. You're yes. having brain changes, so you're going to feel different. When your brain changes, you feel differently. Yeah, and as clinicians, and I'm a clinician too, I don't mind a placebo effect creeping in there and helping somebody <laughs> out because we just want to see the patient get well, but we also want to know what we're doing, what works, and what doesn't work. Yeah. Isn't that right?